Today we're talking about different components of the solar system and how they work together. There's two main types of solar systems for homes. A standard grid connect system without a battery and then a system that has a battery with it. I'll cover the first one first. So the major components there are the bracking that holds your panels to the roof, which consists of rails and brackets that fix the panels down to the roof. Secondly, the solar panels that go on top of those rails. The solar panels produce energy. Thirdly, the inverter, which goes on a wall, usually next to your switchboard or if not a subboard somewhere, that's what converts the energy to useful energy for your home. When you have a battery system, that's the same, but there's one more component there, which is your solar battery, typically sits as close to the inverter and as close to the switchboard as possible. Now, your solar panels are obviously the part of the system that converts, converts sunlight into useful electricity. The size of the solar system will determine how much energy can be produced, as well as the area that the system's installed in, the angle of the roof, if there's shade around, and other factors like that that can vary the output of the solar system. So the panels will produce power. The power from those panels will then come down to cables in DC, down into the inverter. The inverter's job is to convert that electricity into useful energy to the home, which is 240 volts AC on the output side of the inverter. Once the energy comes out of the inverter, it will go into your switchboard and any of those circuits that require power will now draw solar energy. If there's not enough solar energy coming through the inverter, then your home or business will just draw power from the grid. So if you need at any one time, say 10 kilowatts of solar energy, and your solar system in that same moment is producing five kilowatts of solar energy, it will mean that your home will be drawing five kilowatts of energy from your solar panels and five kilowatts of energy from the grid to make up that total required amount of 10 kilowatts. If, on the other hand, your home only needs five kilowatts, let's say, in that moment, and your solar system is actually producing 10 kilowatts, then obviously you've got more solar energy than you need. So you'll use the five kilowatts and then the other five kilowatts that spare will be exported back into the grid and usually you'll get a credit from the grid depending on the retailer that credit will vary in terms of value but there'll be a credit there which will then come back onto your power bill. It's worth noting there that in different areas there's different export limits. So if you do have a larger system installed there might be a limitation on how much energy the network will allow you to export back into the grid. So under that occasion, if there was an export limit of say five kilowatts and you were producing 10 kilowatts but only using five in the home, you wouldn't actually be allowed to export any more than five kilowatts at any time back into the grid. So now let's think about the battery system. That everything works the same, but now you've got a battery in place. So let's go back to your system, you producing 10 kilowatts and you only need in five kilowatts in the home. Now instead of exporting that extra five kilowatts or wasting it if there's some kind of limitation there, you'll actually put that power into the battery. So usually what happens is power comes down from the panels. The first priority is to go into your house. So whatever you need in the home will be provided by solar power. If you're not producing enough, you'll steal some from the grid. Secondly, if you're producing more, so you're producing 10 kilowatts, you're using five, you've got five kilowatts spare, it will go straight into the battery and charge that battery up. Once your battery's full, that's when you start exporting into the grid. Or for example, if you're producing so much solar energy that your battery charge capacity was maxed out, your home was fully catered for, you would still then export some power back into the grid under that situation. But the first priority will be to power your home, the second priority would be to charge your battery, and then the third priority, so the last resort essentially, is to go back into the grid. With the battery, not to get too technical, but different batteries have different charge capacities. So you might have a five kilowatt limit on how much energy you can push into your battery at any one time. Under that circumstance, if you had seven kilowatts of spare solar energy after your home was catered for, it would still only be able to put five kilowatts in at any one time, the rest would go back to the grid. Regardless of how full your battery was, that would be your limitation with the battery. Essentially, that's how that solar system works. 
you do get credits for what goes back into the grid, but it's never going to be the same amount as what you get charged. You might get charged 30 cents and you might only get paid five, uh, 8 cents, just as an example, it varies in different areas. That's why it's always set up so the priority is to use in the home first, secondly charge the battery, and then lastly go back into the grid. If you install a system that doesn't have a battery, it might be worthwhile considering installing a hybrid inverter, which would mean that it would be a bit easier to install a battery later if you did choose to. If you don't choose to do that, it doesn't mean you can't ever install a battery, it just means that you'd have to install what's called an AC coupled battery, which will pair with an inverter that isn't a hybrid inverter and doesn't have any of the battery smarts built in. Obviously, if you're looking at solar energy for the first time, I'm sure this can sound quite confusing. We've got lots of resources that explain how solar energy works on our website and on our YouTube channel. We also obviously have consultants here that have been working with us for a very long time that can guide you through that process. So please do reach out if you had any more questions about how that system works.